Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for another video. If you are new and this is your first time watching one of my videos and you have not yet subscribed, then welcome. My name is Tyler with an O. Okay, so this episode of Pose, um, episode three, it's called Giving and Receiving. It literally just clicked to me as I said that, why they named it Giving and Receiving. I mean, obviously it was talking about, um, you know, Christmas and the holidays and everything like that and giving gifts and receiving gifts and everything like that, but also... There was a little bit of giving and receiving going on. So Miss Damon and what's his name? Ricky. I think it's Ricky. Damon and Boy. So apparently he decided to give up the goodies. He said, baby, I'm ready. He was like, but are, but are you sure? He said, shh, I'm ready. And girl, the gifts were delivered, I, we assume. Um, now it's just really scary. And I think they did this on purpose, um, but it's kind of really scary because it seems like in every relationship or sex scene or anything that has to do with intimacy, there's like this lingering cloud of like, you know, the, the plague that's going around with HIV and AIDS and the virus and all of that. They set that tone so early in the show to where I don't know if I'll ever be able to watch an episode and not think about that, you know? And I'm sure they did that on purpose and kudos to you guys because it is bringing so much awareness to the situation, especially with this being dated back in the 80s. This is the 80s? I know that was like the, the breakout of the epidemic and everything like that. Um, so I mean, it's very relevant to the time and to the setting. But yeah, it's just like there's some moments during the show when I can't even really too much be happy for them because I'm a little worried about their safety. As we were talking about, there's a scene with Damon and... Is his name Ricky? Damn it, what is the boy's name? Okay, yes, his name is Ricky. Um, so yeah, when Damon and Ricky, you know, they were having a cute moment and he was like, I'm ready, da da da. I couldn't help but think like, oh my god, like... What if Ricky has the virus? Like, did they get tested? Um, because, you know, Ricky, when we met Ricky, Ricky was, you know, he was he was homie hopping. And he wasn't homie hopping, but, you know, he, one day he was with Damon. The next day he was with somebody else. And I don't know. I just feel like if I was back in that time period, even now, but it, even when I was, if I was back in that time period, I still feel like I would just be a little bit, of, just a little bit cautious. So when he said that, um, I was just really like, like are you sure you ready like did you, I want to go get tested first or at least use a condom and I and now and okay so I don't doubt that Damon would definitely be safe about it but also another situation Angel and Stan he got her a new crib or whatever so he was like showing her the crib and they got in the bed and she was like oh my god like this is just so nice like come back tonight come back tonight and bring me my presents daddy and so like right then and there like you know they got in the bed and they was about to give freaky or whatever which I'm assuming they did of course they haven't they don't show the sex scenes which I'm kind of glad that they don't and it's no shade I just feel like that's such a um, I feel like it's almost a little too desire but people only desire it so they can criticize it and so I just feel like let's not even open up that can of worms you grow and use your imagination but anyway so they were about to get their freak on or whatever then he opened up the little drawer and then he saw it and then there was condoms in there and I was just like but wait a minute if this is a new place and like nobody's lived there before like did he open a pack of condoms and put them in there anyways that's beside the point i like and they've done they do this in insecure too and i think Issa Rae has commented on it how they purposely make it a point to highlight like hey this sex scene involves safe sex the, the characters are being safe here as a way to you know not promote unsafe sex and you know again kudos to you guys um i feel like that's very useful okay so let's talk about miss electra abundance so miss girl is gonna go through with her sexual reassignment surgery i don't know how i too much feel about her being a mother like she's legendary she's she's sickening but it's just like she's She's not a good person. Like, she's not a good person. And I feel like that's something later in the series we are going to see. Like, they need to do a flashback to, like, her life and see that she was once this innocent, giant-hearted, caring, soft, compassionate creature. And someone did her wrong one day. And she was, you know, I feel like they're going to get that type of story where we can see kind of where she gets that from. Because she's just so heartless to me. Aside from just the way that she reads the girls down. But... Even with her own children, when they were like, you know, they went and they stole a little donation money or whatever, first of all, 
you're stealing donation money. But second of all, the, after they stole it, and then you're like, you know, oh my God, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. Oh my God, my Christmas dreams. Da, 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 da. And then she she just was, she took that money. She was like, $2,300. And she turned to the girl. She was just like, yes, all of your Christmas dreams will come true. And then she took that money, went right down to the hospital, and was just like, this should be more than enough for a deposit for my sexual reassignment surgery. Sign me up. And I was just like, that's not fair. Like, you had the girls out there scamming and mopping for you to get your surgery. And then you didn't even too much tell them why you got the money. So in the last review of the last episode I did, I was talking about, like, I don't understand why Ricky don't join the house. Da -da 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 -da. So it happened. He uh, went ahead and joined the house. Miss Evangelista put him on, like, kind of like a, what's she called? Like a grace period type thing. A trial run, I think she said it was called. Just to see how he would do. And he walked the ball. He got his tens and everything. Actually, I think he got some tens and a few nines, if I remember correctly. But still, he did good for his first time. He, he was first runner-up. That's what it was. He was runner up um you know good for him as far as he him and damon go like i'm still rooting for them because it's just like you know a cute little they're, they're a cute little couple but in terms of like it affecting the career that damon has it in front of him with this whole dance thing that i'm not here for i am very much one on pursuing education higher education developing your career and things like that so i just i just really don't want him to be a distraction. I feel like that's why they planted him in the series. Miss Dean of Dance was playing no games with Damon when he walked up into that class late. He's like, sorry, I'm not. She said, warmed up? Uh, why were you late? He was just like, ooh, I had to come from the Upper East Side and da-da. She said, uh-uh. Xavier, where did you come from? He said, bitch, I flew in from Alaska, ho. Okay, that's not what he said, but <laughs> basically he came from LFR. She was like, exactly. So, Damon, you have no reason why you should be late to my class. And he was just like, well, I was, I was just preparing for the ball. And she was like, oh, that's where your dreams lie? Bitch, be gone. And she kicked him out that class. And he was looking stuck on stupid. Like, at the same time, I didn't really too much feel bad for him. However, I don't like that Miss Dean of Dance wanted to discredit the whole ballroom thing and like the balls and the lifestyle. And when Blanca came and sat down and had the PTA uh, parent-teacher conference with her, she tried it. Dean of Dance tried it. And Blanca was just like, oh, oh, oh no. We can talk about Damon, but you're not going to come for the li my lifestyle. All right. But yeah, Blanca plays that role of the mother um, almost a little too well with her being like domestic and cooking and buying the kids gifts. And like she's literally their mom, which to now I didn't know that the role of mother as far as house mother goes that far. I know mother is the nurturer, the caretaker, everything like that. But I didn't know like she was like the housewife, the maid, the type of shit like that i don't know did we get into angel's walk what category was she um it was she was walking face um and it was like the ice queen or whatever what was it icy something the icy face but she was walking face and girl she came out as an ice princess and when she took bitch angel is so pretty to me she is so beautiful and she got her tens on that category and I was here for it I also gave her a 10 I, I like her a lot but I just get so frustrated with some of the shit that she does um, in terms of this man and this love that she got for him I just think that she's just being a little too naive with everything and not only naive but she's being a little ungrateful and I know that's gonna sound wrong but it's just kind of like he gives her an inch and she wants a mile like okay well okay he gave her more than an inch like he gave that bitch a foot he gave that bitch a meter okay because he bought her a house he got her settled but I mean and I mean it's not much of her to ask like can you just come to me at night for Christmas and you know shit happens he had to stay home his wife was suspicious because of his trifling ass boss or whatever which is a, a, not the next topic but um the fact that she was just so upset and been out of shape about it it was just like but girl like what did you expect i would just assume like in your profession or prior profession this is not your first time dealing with a married man I, i'm just saying so it's just like you're not his wife like he's not your man so i don't know it just makes me mad how been out of shape i, I mean i would be a little frustrated too but at the end of the day while i'm sitting there you know mad i would also look around and be like you know what? I'll see him tomorrow. Okay? Like, so I just, I don't know. His boss is out of line. Out of line. Because a uh, homeboy went in there and presented a me, uh, presented an idea to the boss. He was like, oh, you didn't come through me first. That's my job. Da -da -da -da. He stepped on his toes, whatever. But then he had the nerve to show up to the nigga house. 
what with his wife and then kissed her and then it's just crazy to me how wifey was just so for it like i expect him to kiss her and she'd be like oh my god we shouldn't be doing this da, 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 da. but she was just like wow you've kissed all these models and actresses and you still don't know how to do it right like I don't know. It's just the whole thing. Should, I feel like he just needs to throw the whole wife away and settle down with Angel in their new little penthouse or apartment or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, all in all, this episode wasn't really giving me too much. Like, the episode, it was definitely more on an emotional level. This is definitely one of the more chill subtle just get to know the character character development type of episodes and i'm here for it don't get me wrong because i definitely feel like in a series these things are necessary and it's one of those things like you know you start off good and then you can you know bring it back down so that you can keep that excitement because the next episode i guarantee you is gonna come for the edges like i know it the next episode is gonna be bomb uh, but yeah this episode was definitely i know i wanted to kind of set the scene it's holidays and emotions and the virus and sex and stand and relationships like it was just really really emotional really sentimental and I get it I'm not gonna knock it but with that being said it does definitely make me look forward to the next episode because I'm ready to be slayed again I need to see some more of these ballroom scenes I definitely want to see more of Damon voguing the house down however she did say no more balls for him until she until he shows like he's committed to dance or whatever the case was that's really all I have to say about this episode. It was okay. I'm still here for the series. Excited to see next week's episode. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel below if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any more of this title with an oh goodness and I'm not gonna tell you again. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode or of the series in general or just anything else that you'd like to comment. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will catch you all on my next video. Peace. Okay.